sorry about that, everybody. We uh, started uh, teaching, um, and then I forgot about the recording. So we're in chapter 16, verse 4. Okay, Saul has been stripped of his kingdom. He's still the king, but God is sending David, God is sending Samuel to Jesse's house to anoint David to be king. Verse 4 of uh, chapter 16, And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? Hey, Samuel was a bad dude. Wherever Samuel went, leaders trembled. Hey, they said, hey, are you coming in peace? Because they remember what Samuel did when Samuel came and, 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 and came upon Saul. And Saul had Agag, and Agag was trembling for his life. And Agag was supposed to be dead, but Saul didn't put him to death. And Samuel killed him, hacked him to pieces. And so when Saul came, when Samuel came to this place, the leaders of Bethlehem said, uh, they trembled, the Bible says. And they said, comest thou peaceably, peaceably. And he said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And in the next several verses, you see that Samuel asked Jesse to cause each of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel looked at the first one and said, surely this must be the king's, the Lord's anointed. And God said, no, no, don't go by appearance. And ladies and gentlemen, we should not go by appearance, but by the voice of the Lord, be led by the Holy Spirit. And then after... <laughs> Seven of, Sam, of Jesse's sons passed before Samuel, and Samuel did not get the confirmation from the, from the Lord. He asked, are these all of your sons? And, and Jesse said, no, there is one more, and uh, there remaineth yet the youngest, verse 11. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. So we can't eat. We cannot have this sacrificial meal until we see him. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look at. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. The Lord said, Arise, this is the one, anoint him. He's to be the king. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. It is so important that our leaders be anointed. It is so important that the leaders of the church be anointed, that pastors be anointed. When God separates someone and sanctifies someone, the church leaders ought to anoint those people for the office. And the anointing represents the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is important that you and I be anointed, ladies and gentlemen. Every believer ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every believer ought to uh, be sanctified and set apart to serve the Lord. And we cannot serve the Lord without the presence and the person and the power of of the Holy Spirit. And there are times when we will anoint someone. We, we anoint someone for an office. We anoint someone. God may send you with your olive oil to anoint, anoint someone for healing, for deliverance, or for an office. The anointing is very, very powerful. And so from the moment David was anointed, uh, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And in those days, the Holy Spirit came upon someone. Now, when a person is born again, the Holy Spirit comes into that person to live in our bodies. Praise God. But verse 14, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So God uh, withdrew the Holy Spirit from Saul. And, and, and gave Saul an evil spirit that troubled Saul. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an, an evil spirit from God troubles thee. And so a lot of theologians argue, well, God can't send evil upon people. Hey, God is God. 
he is the ruler. God, God can use someone and, 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 and allow an evil spirit to cause that person to set up an entire kingdom to fall. We see this in Scripture. We see uh, uh, evil. Uh, uh, Adolf Hitler had an evil spirit. Benito Mussolini had an evil spirit. Joseph Stalin had an evil spirit. And those nations that were mighty and powerful, uh, Julius Caesar had an evil spirit. We can go throughout history and look at Alexander the Great had an evil spirit. Those men fell. And, 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 and God allows evil to come upon a person. If a person will not honor God, God will permit evil evil to be in that person but you can be guaranteed that person will fall the sad thing is when you look at history and when you look at biblical history and world history evil people take kingdoms down the the tube with them evil people take a lot of others down with them we're looking at a lot of evil in our nation today and a lot of many many of our pastors are blinded to this many will not admit this many uh will not take a stand against evil well if you won't take a stand against evil evil what good are you what good are you what good is preaching if you're not going to stand for righteousness and holiness but God is going to have his way, ladies and gentlemen. God wants a righteous nation, and he will have a righteous nation. When we look at the history of Israel, Israel went through a lot of stuff. Israel, and especially when we look in the period of the judges, and now we're in the uh, uh, first Samuel, every man did that which was right in his own sight, and, 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 and people did died they died by the numbers and uh israel still israel is still waiting to get to that place where god really has for them uh as a world leader and so uh, we see kingdoms come we see kingdoms go we see righteous leaders and we see unrighteous leaders and Many of these unrighteous leaders think they're getting over uh, uh, and doing whatever they want to do. But God is the judge, ladies and gentlemen. So we need to pray for our leaders. We, we need to pray to God uh, uh, make, make them holy and righteous, that they'll be saved, that they will do the will of God. Okay, and so Saul had an evil spirit that would come upon him, and that evil spirit would torment him so much that the his advisor said well uh you need to get someone to come and play some music for you and they found david uh who had been a uh, saul didn't know this but david had been anointed by samuel to be the next king and that's how david got into the palace of saul uh, they said uh jesse has a son he he's skilled as a musician and he can sing and he's a he's a warrior and Saul made David his armor bearer and whenever that evil spirit came upon Saul David played music and sang songs to him and the evil spirit um, verse 23 of chapter 16 and it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took an harp and played with his hand and Saul was refreshed and was well and the evil spirit departed from him uh, chapter 17 now the Philistines gathered together with their armies for battle for battle so we're gonna see Goliath's challenge David meets Saul David's weapons and David slays Goliath you all have read uh, the story of David and Goliath many many times so we're not gonna uh, read that whole story um, we're gonna uh, fast forward a little bit David chose five stones from the from the brook he couldn't handle that armor that King Saul put on him Dr. Jean Bratton that armor was too heavy he couldn't walk in it the scripture says he couldn't walk in it and he didn't know how to handle it and he said hey take this stuff off me let me use something I uh, am and skilled with and David went to the brook and got five smooth stones ladies and gentlemen and so I've heard people say, well, if David was such a man of faith, why did he have to f choose five stones? And the answer was he chose five stones just in case 
Goliath had four or more brothers, okay? So he chose five stones, and he went against the, uh, Goliath with his sling and took one, put one in the sling and twirled that baby and let her rip. He let her rip, and uh, that stone went straight to Goliath's forehead and knocked him down, killed him. And David took Goliath's sword, ladies and gentlemen. He took his sword and cut the giant's head off. This is gruesome. This is bloody. He cut the giant's head off and held the giant's head up, head up by his hair in his hand. And all of the Philistines fled. They fled. They thought they had a champion. They thought they had a, a, a big bad dude to lead them. And David took him down with one twirl of his slingshot, and, and that was it for Goliath. And so uh, David killed Goliath, and David became the national hero. The national hero saw even um, gave David his daughter, uh, Michael, to be his wife. That didn't turn out right. That didn't turn out too good. And then Saul, that evil spirit that was in Saul, what manifests itself. That evil spirit went and got his cousins and aunts and uncles after David uh, killed Goliath because all the women began singing, Saul killed his thousands, but David killed his tens of thousands. You know, leaders don't like a whole lot of popularity around them if their popularity is not about them. I mean, that proud spirit is a dangerous thing, ladies and gentlemen. And Saul, I mean, if Saul had torment and evil in him, in him before David killed Goliath, it was much worse, worse after David killed Goliath because everywhere they went, if Saul and David were together, the women would sing Saul killed his thousands, but David killed his ten thousands. Okay, uh, let's take a look at uh, chapter 18. We see Saul's jealousy, and then he plots to kill David. And it came to pass when he made an end, had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about brotherly love. Uh, the Greek word is Philadelphia, brotherly love, philos. Uh, not Philadelphia, philos, brotherly love, phileo, phileo, brotherly love. There was nothing funny about this love between them, no. Uh, it, was not, it was not a homosexual love uh, like uh, uh, so many men or so-called men practice today? No, no, that was not the thing um, between David and Jonathan. We're talking about phileo, brotherly love. Jonathan loved David as though David was his own brother. Jonathan loved David more than he loved his own daddy. Jonathan knew his daddy was corrupt, that Saul was no good, and, and Jonathan took to David, and, and they covenanted it with one another to love one another as brothers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is possible to practice brotherly love and, 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 and not cross the line as so many men have done in this society. And now we have men uh, sleeping with men. We got a, a, a major candidate for uh, the presidency of the United States. And uh, if you look at Facebook today, you'll see uh, uh, this major candidate's husband. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's on Facebook. You'll see this major candidate for the president of the United States on Facebook with his husband. And he's, this person is labeled as his husband. I'm not going to call out the name, but you've got a major candidate, ladies and gentlemen, running for president of the United States who is married to a man. Now, this is not phileo. This is abomination. It is not phileo. It is b abomination. Let me get off that subject, okay? And Saul uh, took him that day and would not let him go anymore to his father's house. In other words, Saul put David in his house and would not let him return to Bethlehem. Jonathan made a covenant with David and loved him as he loved his own soul. Jonathan even, verse 4, stripped himself of his own robe and gave it to David. 
gave him his clothing, gave him his sword, gave him his bow. And, and, and that's how much he cared for David. And David went out with us whether, so ever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. I like this, verse 5 of chapter 18. Wherever Saul sent David, David conducted himself wisely. In other words, he could be trusted. He was a godly man. And Saul sent him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. Verse 7, And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? You see the spirit of jealousy, this evil spirit of jealousy. And then jealousy eventually invites uh, 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 homicide and murder and resentment and bitterness and unforgiveness. Jealousy, uh, you, you know, the Bible teaches us in the New Testament that when the, when the unclean spirit is cast out of a person, uh, if, if the person does not fill himself with the Holy Spirit and live holy and godly, that unclean spirit will roam about looking for a place to live. And if he can come back to where he used to live, the Bible says he'll bring seven more spirits with him. And, and the person uh, becomes tormented even more than before. And so um, we see uh, verse 17, Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter Mirab, her will I give thee to wife, only be thou valiant for me, and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. So Saul offered his oldest daughter, Merab, to David. Saul was slick. Saul was slick. Saul was saying, uh, I'm going to give him my oldest daughter, and, uh, but, but actually I'm going to set him up because the Philistines will take care of this young man. And David said unto Saul, verse 18, who am I, and what is my life, or my family's father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? Verse 19, But it came to pass at the time when Mirab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel, the Mihalathite, Mihalathite, Mihalathite to wife. So Saul could not be trusted, ladies and gentlemen. He could not be trusted. Okay, he, he, he would tweet one thing and do another thing. He could not be trusted. Verse 20, and Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David, and they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him. So he gave David Michael, uh, uh, his youngest, younger daughter, and the whole thing is to set David up that the Philistines would kill him. Okay, so you see the rest of this um, chapter is Saul's plot. Commune with David secretly and say, Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. So Saul set David up. Saul didn't really want David to be his son-in-law. Saul did not delight in David. Saul did not love David. Saul's trying to get rid of David. Verse 23, and Saul's servant spake these words in the ears of David. And David said, seemeth it to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed? And the servants of Saul told him, saying, on this manner spake David. And so actually uh, David is given the commission by Saul to go out and kill, uh, kill uh, a hundred Philistines and bring their foreskins to Saul. Saul was wicked. Bring me the foreskins of a hundred Philistines. So David went out and killed two hundred Philistines and brought their foreskins. Verse 27, and they gave them in full tale to the king that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michael, his son, to wife. You know, that, that was not a good marriage. I mean, David killed two hundred men, took, cut off their foreskins, and gave the foreskins to Saul, and that pleased Saul. And Saul gave David his daughter. Verse 28, And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him. 
and Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became, became David's enemy continually. So you see this bitterness, this resentment, this hatred, this animosity growing uh, between Saul and David, all because David was obedient and David had favor with the Lord and with men, and Saul hated every bit of it. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass after they went forth that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. One thing about David, he was a good man, he was an honest man, and he conducted himself very wisely. Chapter 19, we see David escaping a situation, and Saul spake to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants that they should kill David. Saul called his sons together, and Jonathan and others, and told them, kill David. But Jonathan's Saul's son delighted much in David, and Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now therefore I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide yourself. He said, be careful, be alert, <clears throat> hide in a certain place, and I'll find out what my father's plans are. And so in this chapter uh, 19, we see Saul uh, plotting to kill David, and Jonathan discovering the wickedness in his father's heart, and the, the fact that Saul wanted David removed from the face of the earth. And so uh, Saul, Jonathan made it possible for David to escape. Okay, verse 10. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. So David knew that Saul was up to no good. Verse 12 of chapter 19, so Michael let David down through a window. Okay, the youngest daughter, who is David's wife, let David down the window. And he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed. In other words, she, she made up the bed as though someone was sleeping in it and put a pillow of goat's hair for his holster, bolster and covered it with a cloth. And, and listen to this, verse 14 of chapter 19. And when Saul sent messages to take David, she said, he is sick. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David. Saul didn't care if he was sick. Bring him back. Bring the whole bed. Bring the bed to me with him in it. That's how vicious, how wicked Saul was. Bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. Verse 15. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Saul said unto Michael, Why hast thou deceived me so? And sent away mine enemy that he has escaped. And Michael answered Saul, He said unto me, Let me go. Why should I kill thee? So Michael said, He said, Why should I kill you too? Let me go. Help me to escape. So uh, she helped David to escape. So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel at Ramah. David, Samuel lived in Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Nile. Okay, so Saul finds out that David was in Nile for Samuel. Saul had spies all over the place, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 20, and Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. So Saul sent messengers to go and capture David, bring him back from Samuel. And uh, when those messengers got there, they saw Samuel and the prophets prophesying and uh and, and, and the Spirit of God came upon Saul's messengers, and they prophesied. Verse 21, and when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers 
And they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Ladies and gentlemen, we serve a mighty God. When God has set you apart, come on, somebody. When God has set you apart and sanctified you, got a work for you to do. Dustina, he's got a work for you to do. He's got a work for your son to do. He's got a work for you to do, Jane Bratton. He's got a work for you to do, uh, Ryan Trogler, uh, Lisa Johnson, uh, Brian Whitaker, Karen, uh, everybody listening, Ben Becker, God's got a work for you. And when God sanctifies you and sets you apart, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That is scriptural. God will make a way out of no way. He will come to our rescue. He will deliver us. And, and we're to remain faithful and trust in the Lord with all our heart. The Bible says, blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Okay? And so we see God um, working, working on David's behalf. And uh, the very ones whom Saul sent to capture David uh, wind up prophesying, becoming prophets themselves. Verse 23, and he went thither to Nioth and Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Nioth and Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore, they say, is Saul also among the prophets? Saul sent three groups of men out to capture David, bring him back. And those three began, uh, they, they, they were humbled uh, before, the, the, before the Lord. And they began prophesying, praising God and worshiping God. And then Saul himself went out to capture David. And Saul, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Saul, and Saul humbled himself and began worshiping and praising the Lord. Which brings us to chapter 20. We see David and Jonathan again. David fled from Nioth to Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? David was perplexed, ladies and gentlemen. What have I done? I haven't done anything to your father. Why is he so bent on killing me? And he said unto him, God forbid that thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will show it to me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David swore moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I found grace in thine eyes. And he said, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. So David knew. There was nothing, just a step of uh, uh, death, one step between him and death. That's how critical the situation was. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desires, I will even do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon. I shall not fail to sit with the king at meat, but let me go that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at even. So every first of the month, David was to eat a meal with Saul and his family. But David said, uh-uh, not this time. I ain't going to be there. Uh, and he said, I, I know your father's going to be angry with me and wroth and, and his father. Your father's going to want an excuse, but tell him I had to go to Bethlehem uh, because my family called a, a special sacrifice, and I'm supposed to be there. And so that's the way uh, David and Jonathan planned it out, but Jonathan said, uh, tarry in this secret place, and I will find out from my father what his plans are, and if it's safe for you to come back, I'll let you know, and if, if not, I will tell you. And so that is when um, Jonathan um, decided he would, he told David, I will shoot arrows, I'll shoot three arrows. Uh, if, if I shoot them on this side, and, and the words I speak, then you know it's all right to come back. But if I shoot the arrows beyond and say, no, go away, go away, go further, 
I'm telling when I tell my servant to go further away to seek the arrows, you know it's time for you to uh, 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 hightail it out of here. And so that is how David got the message that Saul intended intensely to kill uh, David. In fact, Saul was so angry, Saul was so angry that Saul threw his own javelin at his son Jonathan to kill Jonathan. Okay, so Saul was a troubled, tormented man. Chapter 21, David meets Ahimelech. Then came David to Nob to Ahimelech the priest, and Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David. Hey, even the priest was afraid at the meeting of David. The, the, the priest knew that Saul was after David, and the priest was afraid and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? But David was very shrewd. David knew that they were spies. He couldn't even trust the priest. And David, uh, when, when the priest asked him, Why are you alone and no man with thee? David said unto Ahimelech the priest, chapter 21, verse 2, The king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have, I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now, therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, verse 4. And he said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. He said, This is holy bread. I'm going to replace the bread uh, uh, with this fresh bread. And, and uh, this is holy bread, sanctified unto the Lord. Uh, and I can only give it to you if your men have not touched uh, uh, women in the last three days. David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out. And the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common. Yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread. David was bold enough to eat sanctified bread, for there was no bread there but the show bread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was certainly taken. Now there's a spy in the camp. His name was Doeg, verse 7, uh, an Edomite. And uh, he was a, a, one, of, one of Saul's spies. He saw David, and David said unto Ahimelech, Is there... And is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? David needed a weapon. He was on the run. And so uh, Ahimelech takes David and gives David, he said, the sword that you used to kill Goliath, it's here under the ephod. And uh, David took Goliath's sword, and that became his weapon as he fled on his way to um, live among the Philistines. Okay? And... Verse 11, And the servants of Achish said unto him, the Philistine of Gath, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul had slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish the king of Gath. David had to flee, ladies and gentlemen, into the land of his enemy the land of Goliath, the Philistine. That's how afraid he was of Saul. Saul was out to kill David, and David ran for his life and uh, ran to Achish, the king of the Philistines. And uh, David knew that Achish hated him. Uh, and look at how David changes his behavior. The Academy Award winner, ladies and gentlemen, verse 13. And he changed his behavior before them meaning before the Philistines, and feigned himself mad in their hands. David changed his behavior and pretended he was mad and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. David pretended he was mad and crazy. He was foaming at the mouth. He was scraping and crawling, grasping at the door of the gate. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Hey, I don't need this madman in my camp, Achish is saying. Have I need of madmen 
that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Verse 22, chapter 22, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. David played the madman, ladies and gentlemen. He, he foamed at the mouth. He was scraping at the doors with his fingernails and, and, and acting crazy. And, and that convinced Achish, the king of the Philistines, that David was mad. The Achish said, I don't need this madman. Uh, what can I do with him? And David was able to escape uh, the wrath of Achish also. And then his father and his brothers gathered around him, verse 2 uh, of chapter 22, and everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto David, and he became a captain over them, and there were, were with him about 400 men. And so David begins to build an army. All the debtors, all the ones who were discontent, the malcontents, the evil ones, the, those who had a, 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 a problem with the king. And that's how David built an army. Okay, in verse 5 of chapter 22, we see the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart, and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Harith. You see, God was with David. God had Gad the prophet meet with David and tell him where to go for his next step. And, 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 and the scripture teaches us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. We see this in David's life. Uh, his steps are ordered by the Lord. Yes, he committed sins. Yes, he did things he should not have done. But he was quick to repent. And we see God uh, uh, giving David great favor. And then, remember this uh, spy, Doeg, who had seen David uh, a while back, went to Saul and told, told Saul where David was. And then uh, Saul sent Doeg, uh, Doeg um, to capture David. David was not there. And uh, uh, Doeg sent the message back to Saul that the, the priest had, the priest had uh, helped David to escape. And Saul ordered his men to kill the priest. Saul was there with an army. He ordered his men to kill the priest, priest, plural. And Saul's men would not obey that. And so Saul commanded Doeg to kill Ahimelech and the priests. And Doeg uh, killed those priests. Verse 18, And the king said to Doeg, Turn thou and fall upon the priests. And Doeg the Edomite turned. And he fell upon the priests and slew on that day four score and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. So we're looking at some real drama, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 22, And David said unto Abiathar, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. David was very distraught. He said, I, I'm the reason why all these people were killed. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life. But with me thou shalt be in safeguard. And so chapter 23, we see David praying a prayer. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Kilah. And David, David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we come to Kila against the armies of the Philistines? Verse 4, Then David inquired of the Lord again. Ladies and gentlemen, we see David praying again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Kila, and I will deliver the Philistines into thine hands. So David was led by the Lord. Prayer is important, ladies and gentlemen. Prayer is important. David got his directions from the Lord. We see on one occasion that uh, the prophet Gad came to David. We see Samuel leading David while Samuel was alive. Okay, and ver chapter 23, verse 9, And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abiathar the priest, 
bring hither the ephod. Now the ephod, ladies and gentlemen, was like a breastplate. Okay, it had the, the thuman and the uh, uh, it had the lights that lit. And whenever uh, the person would inquire of the Lord, uh, when God answered, the lights on that ephod would light up, and and they would miraculously light up, and the the answer would be spoken uh, to God's servant. Verse 12, Then said David, Will the men of Kilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will. They will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed out of Kilah. That's how David was able to leave that, per that place, because he inquired of God with the ephod and asked God. And God said, Yes, they will, they will capture you if you stay here. And so David split the scene again. And so chapter 23, we see Saul hunting David. And then chapter 24, David confronts Saul. David confronts Saul. David had an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. He had an opportunity to kill Saul. And we can learn a lot. We can learn a lot uh, about uh, God's leaders. Even when we have someone wicked leading a nation, God can... God allows kings and presidents and prime ministers to come into office, and, 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 and we have a responsibility to pray for them, even for those that are practicing wickedness. And we learn from David about touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. Okay, verse 4. Uh, verse 3, and there came, of, of 24, 23, 24, verse 3, and he came to the sheep coats by the way where was the cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. He went in to cover his feet. Jackie Carter, what's that mean? What he, what's that mean he went in to cover his feet? Okay, he went in to relieve himself. He, he went to into, he, huh? He had to go potty. He had to go to the potty. Okay, Jackie said Saul had to go into to, to the potty in the cave. He had to do number two, ladies and gentlemen. Not not, not number one. He had to do number two. <laughs> and David found this to be a great opportunity, and his his uh, his his advisors. Uh, gave him this opportunity. Verse 4, And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good to thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. David could have killed Saul, ladies and gentlemen, but he did not kill Saul. He cut off a portion of David's robe, uh, of Saul's robe. Saul had to take his robe off, robe up to do his business. David cut off a piece of his robe, and it came to pass after that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. David was even upset with himself that he had cut off a piece of Saul's garment. But then later on, uh, David stood on the top of a hill and 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 and, and told Saul, "Look at your look at your robe. I could have killed you." Why are you so angry with me? Why do you keep pursuing me? I could have killed you. Verse 21, Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord that they will, thou will not cut off my seed after me. That's what Saul said. Saul recognized. Well, let's back up to verse 20 of chapter 24. And now behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord that thou will not cut off my seed after me, and that thou will not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David swore unto Saul, and Saul went home, but David and his men got them up unto the hold. David was not stupid. David heard Saul say something, but David was not stupid, ladies and gentlemen. They kept on running. Kept on running. David knew that Saul spoke one thing and did another thing. Okay, and so we meet Abigail in chapter 25. What a really delightful woman. Now, she was married. She was married to a man named Nabal, 
and Nabal was very rich and prosperous, and David took his men and, and asked Nabal to feed them, give them some sheep, give them some food, and Nabal was just plain bitter, mean, and nasty. And um, verse 10, And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David, and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed from my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all these things. And David said unto his men, verse 13, that means they get ready for war, gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men and 200 abode by the stuff. David was ready to go and attack Nabal and kill him and his family and everything. But Abigail, verse 14, one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute my master, and he railed on them. David sent messengers out of the wilderness to meet your husband, and your husband was mean and nasty to them, and they told her the story. And so, verse 18, she made haste, took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she did not tell her husband. And so Abigail met David. And Abigail fell on her face on the ground and apologized to David for the ugly behavior of her husband and, and asked David to accept these things and to feed his men. What a great woman she was. I mean, she even defied her husband and, 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 and knew David had come in peace, and so she fed David. And then a, a, uh, a strange thing happened. When, Ab when Nabal found out what had happened, when Nabal, when, when Nabal found out what happened, he had a stroke. He had a stroke or a heart attack. And seven days later, Nabal died. He died. And so to make a long story short, David's men found out how, that Nabal had died. David sent for her and asked her to be his wife. David didn't play. Okay, now David, David was married to, to Michael, and uh, Saul, he knew Saul had arranged that. It was a setup, and David saw this godly woman, Abigail. She was now free, and David didn't let her stay on the, on, on, on the market too long. Hey, Dr. Gene Bratton, he didn't let her stay on the, on the market too long. Okay. No, he took, did not. <laughs> took her off the market, okay, <laughs> <laughs> and married her. And then he married also another woman, a Jezreelite, Jezreelite, Ahinoam. So David has uh, two wives, actually three wives, but look at verse 44 of chapter 26. But Saul had given Michael, his daughter, David's wife, to Falti, the son of Laish, which was of Galim. Saul was wicked. Saul just gave his wife to David to be uh, his daughter to David. Then he took her from him and gave her to another man. So we find David uh, at this point. He's married to Abigail and to Ahinoam. <clears throat> okay, chapter 24. Okay, we've been through 24, 25, 26. Okay, 25, 1. Go back to 25, 1. S Samuel died, the verse, first verse. Samuel died. And all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him, okay, and buried him in the house of Ramah. And David arose and went to the wilderness of Paran. So David's still on the run. That's before he met Abigail. Okay, chapter, trying to finish this up in the next few minutes. Uh, David escaped again to Gath, back to Achish, the king there. And uh, Saul was hot, hotly intense on killing David. So David goes back to Gath, and, and, 
and um, puts himself on the gas authority, on the Achish's authority to join the army of the Philistines. But what David actually did was to make separate raids, independent raids against the Philistines in the south, and he slaughtered a lot of Philistines and would return to Achish and, and tell Achish that he was on a different kind of mission. And Achish had no clue that David was killing Philistines under Achish's authority. But then it came to a point where <coughs> Achish and the Philistines prepare and the Amalekites prepare to war against King Saul. Okay, we see in um, chapter 29, the Amalekites are victorious. And then in chapter 30, the Amalekites are defeated. Okay, chapter 31. But before, before we get to the death of Saul, Achish has an opportunity to take David with him on the war against King Saul. But Achish's advisors advise him, no, 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 no. Send David away. Because if we war against his master Saul, he will turn against us. He's an Israelite. He will turn against us. And uh, even though Achish wanted to keep Saul, keep David with him, Achish obeyed the, uh, the advice of his advisors and his, other, his tribal leaders and sent David off. And that's when Achish and the Philistines and the Amalekites went up against Saul and fought against King Saul. And so we see in chapter 31 the death of Saul, where Saul is put to death uh, by the Philistines. Uh, we need to, I wish I had time to really look at uh, chapter 30. Chapter 30 is a beautiful beautiful example of prayer and trusting in the Lord. David was given by Achish the city of Ziklag and the Amalekites raided Ziklag while David was away fighting with Achish uh, with, along with Achish's army. When David is sent back from Achish while Achish and the Philistines are moving against King Saul David comes back to his city, Ziklag, and finds that his two wives and the wives of his 600 men and their children and their belongings, their possessions are taken away. Their wives were not killed. The children were not killed. But they burned down the city. And David comes to Ziklag. And, and, and the men with him, the 600 men, uh, they, they called them the sons of Belial, uh, 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 we, we, we would call them SOBs in, in our modern day uh, 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 vernacular. Uh, these were sons of the devil, okay? Uh, they were not good men, but that's David's army. And they threatened. When they got to Ziklag and found out that their wives and children had been carried away by the Amalekites, they threatened to stone David to death. And the scripture says, and David call for the ephod and David encouraged himself in the Lord what a powerful expression the verse says he encouraged himself in the Lord and ladies and gentlemen whenever we're in trouble we ought we ought to be like King David encourage ourselves in the Lord in other words even though his his army threatened to stone him to death they hated him because uh, they said, it's because of you we were fighting and, and we lost our wives and children. We ought to kill you. And David went before the Lord in prayer and stayed in prayer and encouraged himself in the Lord. And that's the way God wants us to, to roll with him, to encourage ourselves in him, to trust him, to pray. God will make a way out of no way. And David sought the Lord. He took the ephod and he asked the priest, asked God, shall I pursue the Amalekites? And the Lord said, yes, pursue them. And David said in prayer, ask, ask God, uh, shall I overcome them? Shall I overtake them? Yes, you shall overtake them. And David and his 600 men saw, saw, started out to, to subdue the Amalekites. 400 of them went with David 
200 were so tired that they could not cross the brook be sore, so they had to stand by the stuff and watch the supplies. And David, with 400 men, pursued the Amalekites and destroyed the Amalekites and brought back their wives and their children and a wealth of possessions, including cattle and oxen and sheep. And David uh, took that wealth that they had uh, stripped from the uh, Malachites, <clears throat> and he gave that material, those materials to the surrounding Israelites of the different tribes. And that is how David helped uh, uh, make more friends among Israel and helped to solidify his kingdom when he was declared king of Israel. Woo! We covered a lot of material tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We covered a lot of material. Let's ask uh, Dr. Gene Bratton for some uh, commentary, for some any concluding uh, remarks. Um, I did write in the chat box when uh, you were going over the battle between uh, David and Goliath, and when uh, Saul gave David his armor. That's just a lesson that you can't fight your battle using someone else's equipment. We have right. to use what God has given us, each of us. He's given us all something to fight our battles, and that's faith. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Braden. You can't fight and win your battle using somebody else's equipment or, or, or materials. And add to that, uh, you can't fight your battle riding somebody else's praise. Come on now. That's, we need to yeah, praise amen. him for ourselves. That's why God wants a personal relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, with a personal relationship with God, God can speak to us personally. He can direct us step by step in every battle we're in. If you're in a battle tonight, just trust the Lord. Trust God. God said, he told uh, Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. I didn't mean to start preaching behind that, Dr. Gene Bratton, but it was a good opportunity. Anything else, Dr. Gene? BK has I have something I also like to say about Goliath. You know, he had diarrhea of the mouth and constipation of the brain. And it Diarrhea of the mouth and constipation of the brain. He was most messed up, wasn't he? Yes. So messed up, he didn't see what was coming right between the eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he caught him right between the eyes. Yeah. You know, you can be mouthing off so much, you can't even see it coming. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Bratton. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Jackie Carter, did we miss anything in the, in the Elsa chat window? And it's, yes, and it's, BK had a question about the uh, consecrated bread that David and his men ate. Yes, yes. The consecrated. See what's CK's question? CK, come on and ask your question. Love your question, CK. My question was: um, I was thinking during the time of Moses that that consecrated bread was to be eaten only by the priests and their families and not by the other people. Yes. Uh, did I misunderstand yes. that? Yes. You, you have a good understanding of that, CK. Mm -hmm. And this also lets us know uh, uh, how, how faithful David was in this situation. This was the showbread. This was the showbread uh, uh, I don't know where the where, where exactly the tabernacle was at that time. Uh, it was supposed to be in Shiloh, but uh, the priest had bread that he was uh, taking to replace the bread that was in uh, on on the showbread table. That was consecrated bread, CK, and only to be eaten by the priest. And so David David was desperate. He was hungry. And yes. David trusted. Mm -hmm. David knew. He knew that uh, uh, the common person was not to eat that bread, only to be eaten, eaten by the priest's family. But David was running for his life, CK. And David had the, the confidence in the Lord that he could eat that bread and not die. What do you think That's about right. that, CK? Well, 
Well, I thought about it a, a bit, and I was thinking that if there was a sin there, it was by the priest and not necessarily by David. Because yes, David. David didn't take it. The priest gave it to him. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. David found, C.K., David found great favor in the right. Lord's sight. Great favor. And, and he, yeah. that's how, how much David trusted the Lord. Thanks, C.K. You come up with, always come up with some very challenging and brilliant questions, and we appreciate you very much. What, yes, and that, was all, that was all, C.K., that the uh, priest had at that time. And as you read further and further, Saul, in his mental illness, killed every priest that helped David. Yes, yes, That's yes, he, except for Abiathar. Yes. Yep. Thank you it, very much. Thank what, you what, very much. CK? One other, one other observation that I had, and maybe it's because it's in the time of life or the position of my life that I'm in, but it seems like the message that I got from this entire lesson was that it's hard nowadays to know because there's so many lies being told, what you can believe and what you can't. And it seemed like with David, there was a lot of times when he just had to turn to God to get the answers and direction. And I feel like we're kind of in that time right now. CK, I want I want to uh, agree with you there because I, we are all in that same time frame that you're in. We're in the time of our life. You don't know what to believe. You really don't know who to believe, and and that is another reason, CK, why we need to have a personal walk with the Lord. Yeah. And to know. Thanks for that observation, CK. Because hey, you look at <clears throat> whether it's. Uh, CNN or ABC or CBS or ABC or whoever, even CK, if, if, when it's TBN, the Trinity Broadcasting Network, you don't really know if you're getting the truth or not. And so we need to know the Lord for ourselves. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Brilliant observation, CK. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to comment or questions? We've got one minute. <laughs> uh, I had one more thing. I feel okay. like our class is being led for this specific time and period. Uh, I don't think it's accidental that we are covering these portions of a Bible and um, being given this inside at this time. You know, as I was in the last in the last couple of weeks, CK, I've, I've I've gotten that same. Uh, message that you you you've just articulated. These time we're studying what happened to Israel, but we're also seeing CK what is happening in our lives today. Is that what you're trying to say? It, exactly. It as it says that as it was in the Old Testament. It will be in the end times as well. And I feel like um, our specific assignments and portions of the Bible that we're covering relate very directly to our current time. Yes. And so I feel like this is kind of heaven-led. Yes. I agree with you. I agree with you. And that, that adds to the excitement of, of these teachings even more as we study the Word. We're living in the age where we're actually reliving the times, the kinds of times that David lived in and, and Samuel lived in and, and the political climate and the, 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 uh, uh, the duplicity oh. and the deception and the delusion. And God is telling us, be alert, be awake. Draw nigh unto him. Trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Hello. Thank you, C.K. Hi. Jackie, I can hear your, your phone call. Okay, Phyllis. Okay, so we're living in these kinds of times. So be alert, ladies and gentlemen. Be prayerful. Be mm. prayed up. Uh, study the word of God. Uh, trust the Holy Spirit to guide us. And, and, 
And let us not be deceived by the things we're seeing and hearing, because there are a lot of voices out there, and you don't know who to believe, but let's put our trust in the Lord. And I love this verse, blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. I think that Psalm 40, verse 4, came from David himself. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And, and who better can we get this from than David? We're going to see later on that David uh, commits some sins and some crimes, but we also learn, in, even in his uh, weaknesses, that he still trusted God and, and trusted that God would deliver him uh, uh, upon the confession of his sins. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. when you sin, when you and I sin, when we tear our heart and tear our heart and, and, and cry out to the Lord, I mean in sincere uh, uh, remorse and, and, and grief, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Praise Amen. God. Well, I've enjoyed this night, and I want you all to have a really, really great night. Um, Apostle? Yes. Can I say something? Yes, you may. I, I was just thinking about I'm just going to go back just a little bit about when they wanted a king. And it's, it's at now where I was watching some of the History Channel and where they – and we're in that same kind of thing where they said, I want a king, and how they uplift, you know, the presidents and whoever it may be. Um, they uplift the presidents, and they they use them as a God and not listening to the God. Listen to God, you know, because that's you're living, he, this add You're adding on to what C.K. is saying. Mm-hmm. We're living in these kinds of times, and, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we need to listen to God. We li- yes, need truly. to listen to God. There's a, a show coming on next week, uh, King or President, and they commend George Washington. George Washington could have been a king, but he chose to be president. Okay, and um, let us let us let us a, as we go through these turbulent times. And there's a lot of duplicity, a lot of deception going on. A lot of believers are being snowed under. Uh huh. And even now, keep, I'm sorry, but even keep, now, um, uh, we was um, my husband was watching a basketball game uh, last night or something, and where people are being deceived, even with um, homosexuality. Um, yeah, you see the yeah. parents agreeing, and it's just like it, it, it saddens me because it brings tears to my heart to see yes. that kind of thing. That we have. Um, that's you know that's not God. You know we um, have. We have a man running for president. He took oh yeah, uh, I know it's... took second place in the New Hampshire uh, primary, and he is married to a man. And this is what some many Americans want for their president. Come on now, we need because to turn to the Lord that... and repent and seek the face of God and return yeah. to righteousness and holiness. Yes, I said it, and I will live for what I just said. We need to turn to God and seek God. God uh-huh. requires holiness, righteousness, no matter how popular this man Amen. will get. God Amen. still stands on his word. A man shall leave his father and mother and take unto him a wife. <laughs> God made them male and female. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to stick with this word. Yes. God bless you all. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Husbands Valentine's love your wives Day. as Christ Thank loved the church. You. Uh-huh. Okay. And um, love you too. We love you all. And if you're not married, we love you. Okay. <laughs> okay, we love you. Happy and and, and by the way, Happy by the way, you know, uh, those those ladies out there who are not married, you are loved by God. Don't get caught up on this Valentine's yes. Day hype. If nobody's bringing you candy and flowers, you're still precious and special in God's sight. Praise God. Amen. Love you all. Amen. Love you too. Good night. Okay. Have a good God night, bless everybody. Everyone. Good night, okay. good night Brian Whitaker. Good night, Karen. Good night, Ryan. Good night, Dustin. Good night. good night, everybody. We love you. Good night. Good night. Love you. See you soon. God bless you. Okay. Love you all. God bless.